So feedback Nash equilibrium is said to be of delayed commitment commitment type if its appropriate restriction stage is a delayed commitment type type for the corresponding single act game. So obviously this, this tells you how much structure is needed before we even start uh, analyzing and even after you put in so much structure, okay, we, we can still get, uh, get many different exotic equilibria and so on. And so for uh, there we are therefore now looking for feedback Nash equilibria and in that feedback Nash equilibrium you can further restrict and say well, we will look for equilibria of delayed commitment type. Okay. So, uh, the uh, one of the main lessons that you see once you start looking at multi act games is how complicated the strategic analysis can become where, you know even with a small number of stages like if you have two or three stages also you know the number the the, the kind of variety that you can get variety of outcomes that you can get is tremendous okay let me draw one game and you tell me if this is in feedback form or not so let's say So this okay. So and now I'll write draw the information sets. So is this in feedback form? You can't. I mean, it, this is not. You can see actually you cannot make, divide this into stages where each player is playing once, and yet have uh, you know information sets not going across stages. Okay, that's not possible. So this is not in feedback form. Not feedback form. It's not even stage wise form. Okay. If you, so let's see, is this allowed? So, player one, player two, not stage wise. So generally what we do is this is again as I said it is a part of it is more of a modeling device. You specify the stages okay. You can there are more than one way of uh, specifying the stages but you fix the stages first and then start drawing the information sets. Uh, that is a that is a more that is a much more uh, effective way of otherwise you you could have uh, of course there are more than one way of uh, of creating stages. Then, then you could have complications because of that. Not necessarily, not necessarily. Okay. Now here, let me see. Say, for example, suppose I take. So this is player one. This is player two. 
uh, at this. Now, here suppose I have this Now, is this okay? So, this is stage wise, but it is not in feedback form and that is because of this this information set that I drew, which is going across across two nodes which are in two different subtrees, right. So, this is not allowed. So, you cannot do this, this is not in feedback form, ok. But this kind of thing is not a problem, ok. Remember, it is there is no problem with having an information set like this, because it is part of one uh, uh, the the single act game in that starting from this particular node here ok. Likewise, this is also not a problem see player 2 is not the first acting player at this stage. So, player 2 can have uh, uh, imperfect information at that. You cannot uh, similarly you cannot have something like this because then player then this at this stage player 1 is confused about you know what had happened in the previous stage ok. Now, it may be possible for you to do uh, to play around with this in some way by you could potentially you know depending on the problem you could potentially exchange these two make player 2 the first acting player in this and player 1 first acting player there. But be careful again you cannot violate the other requirement where player 1's information set should not go across two different uh, branches of player the first acting player who is now player 2 ok. So, depending on the problem you may be or may not be able to do this. So, just be aware. By not having it uh, well you cannot see this thing right the if you uh, so this when we write for all this effectively what we are saying is that regardless of what has happened in the previous stage you should be able to get an equilibrium which means that your strategy the equilibrium here is uh, the what you are playing in every subtree is a function of what has happened along that subtree alone and not across and does not depend on the other parts of the subtree. So, if you have an information set like this this starts breaking down. So, what you essentially what will happen is now how to play in this tree and how to play in this tree become coupled and that in turn depends on what has happened in the previous stage because because you do not know what happened at the previous stage I mean at least player 2 does not know. No, no, it is not physical, it is more analytical I would say, it is an analytical uh, thing which we are trying to um, you know yeah make you just it just makes the analysis analysis easier ok. Now, uh, again the informational inferiority as a concept again extends, but here we talk of informational inferiority at each stage ok. You cannot make uh, cre create information you could, but again it leads to it becomes way more complicated. You cannot create inf uh, I mean inf informationally inferior games by putting information sets across games uh, across stages into one into one information set right. Then a player has forgotten which stage he is at which everything he forgets and that sort or he does not remember any of that. That is also an inferior game, but then results are much harder to prove for those kind of things. So, we talk of informational inferiority at a stage wise level ok. So, you you take the information sets combine them at the stage wise level, but still retain the feedback form and so on then you can you can potentially uh, uh, you know use the whatever results we had from before. Uh, again I mean there is not uh, once a game is multi act game without putting structure we cannot analyze much more ok. So, this is pretty much all uh, you know one can say sort of systematically otherwise uh, the only approach to finding all equi uh, all equilibria and or for finding any equilibrium is to just write out the normal form and then so it that is going to be you know an ex huge normal form with so many uh, uh, with vast number of strategies for each player. Uh, so, we will we will stop here and uh, so, what we will do in the next class is uh, we will go in a different direction and start talking about 
the use of random randomness in uh, in in a dynamic game okay phase of randomizing in a dynamic game